Okay, so we've uh, we've plenty more football to talk about in the in in the Talchin Cup final, but we wanted to do a little power rankings. We've probably been building up to this for a long time, but the Kilkenny 06 to 09 team and the Limerick 2020 to now team. So the one that did four in a row versus the one that's bidding to do four in a row. How on earth are we going to pick a combined 15 here, Michael Verney? You wanted to do this. So all criticism, direct at ML Verney on Twitter. Yeah, we wanted to do it. We're, go we're, going, to, we're going, to, going to give it a fair whack. Now, I will say this, the, the goalkeeping spot is probably one of the easier spots to pick, you have to say. If you look at Kilkenny 06 to 09, I think McGarry played 06 or 07, and with due respect, he was a very good keeper. But And PJ Ryan was man of the match in the 09 final. But like, if you look at the career that Nicky Quaid had, has, has had, you know, since the late, was he starting in 09 or 2010, and you look at the level he's brought goalkeeping to now, him and Owen Murphy have probably taken goalkeeping to another level. So I think um, I think Nicky's a firm number one there. Yeah, try to be somewhere in neutral, Shane, says 36 in county, obviously, uh, obviously a Kilkenny man. I'm always neutral. I want both teams to lose. I want no one picked. <laughs> uh, so cornerback options. So you're looking at Sean Finn, Michael Kavanagh, uh, Jackie Turrell. I mean, I might as well bring in both um, full-back slots at this stage. Or both ba cornerback ba slots at this Barry stage. Barry Nash. Uh, Jackie Turrell. Like, oh, did I already mention him? Uh, let me just look up the 2006 All-Ireland Final. Where are, we, um, where are we standing on JJ Delaney in this? Well, if you look at the 08 final, he played at wing back. He played at wing back throughout this whole run and actually didn't play in the 06 final. So are we are we only looking at him as a wing back or are we looking at, is he an option for full back? I think we're going to have to man up and say, did he play full back primarily in that run? Probably not. And probably look at him more as a wing back only. Here. Yeah, Noel Hickey was kind of in his prime around this time. Um, so he's the full back option. Um Going up against what? Who's he going up against? Mike, Mike Casey, Dan Morrissey. Um, I'm not forgetting anyone, am I? That played fullback for. Uh, yeah, no, I, no, I, think, think, so. I think it's just. I think it's just the two of them. So you have Sean Finn in cornerback. Obviously, I have to say now, I'm a massive Mick Cavanaugh fan. Um, I thought he was. I thought he was unreal for Kenny. Even that, I was looking back at it recently. I just said, just wanted a little pick me up one day. So I just looked at the last ten minutes of the the all nine final, and his, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just you're just like ah, today's kind of Jesus. You're kind of just tipping along. Just a little perk me up. Just watch the last. 10 you minutes. are a weird, weird lad. <laughs> I'm not weird. I was doing a piece, and I just said I like, have a little look back on it. But his little slighted effort to stay. To, he slid out over the sideline the Hogan stand side but managed to keep the ball in and then all of a sudden you know 15 seconds there Martin Comfort had the ball had the ball in the back of the net but uh, I would rate him really really highly as a cornerback I'd have to say but Jesus it's very hard to go against Sean Finn very you very know, hard to go against Sean Finn actually I just double checked it there just to be sure and JJ did play full back in the 9 final was Noel Hickey injured in the, in the line final or what Maybe he, he was. No, he no, he played in the 09 final at full back. Played the full game there. Who did? JJ or Noel Hickey? JJ. But so, Noel so, Hickey no Noel Hickey played there in 08, 07, and 06. He played there in 10, obviously, as well. JJ comes into the full back reckoning so realistically. Well, for he only played there for one out of the four games, and he played wing back for Oh, he didn't play in 06 because he had... The, the crucial in 06, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 07, he played wing back. 08, he played wing back. So, I think if if Hickey has played there in three of the four finals, and of the three that uh, Delaney has played, he's played two of them wing back, I think we have to look at him as a wing back only. Okay, that makes that. This is going to be some stacked half back line. <laughs> I, I think that adds a little something to it. Uh, Shane, who's the goalkeeper of the year in football? We'll come back to that a little bit later. No one, not one Kilkenny player gets in the Limerick half back line. Uh, we'll uh, see about that. Bin, JJ Hickey got sick, I think. Was that not a couple of years earlier? Earlier was that not around 05 or 06? He had the heart issue. I can't, I can't remember fully, but uh, maybe we should just nail our, nail our colours to the mass. So we going again? Are we going Noel Hickey, Dan Morrissey, or Mike Casey for the full back spot? Oh, uh, I think Dan Morrissey. No, no Hickey. There, no Hickey. You know he did very well as well. Dan Morrissey's played wing back, obviously in that too. Um, but has he primarily played full back in the last few years? Dan. Yeah. 
he played wing back last year. He came in 2020 and reinvented reinvented him as a full back when Casey got injured just before the COVID championship started. 2021, I think he played full back again. Casey played full back predominantly all the games last year. Dan yeah. Morrissey has played full back a bit this year. I, I I'd be go, I'd be something for an old hickey now. In his pri- in his prime, he was the full back of his generation. Uh, to me, anyway. Now, Dan is unbelievably versatile, unbelievably consistent, and Mike Casey's obviously had his injuries, but when he's fit, he's so he's so good. And it's funny, like Noel Hickey's not a huge man. Mike Casey's not a huge man. Dan Morris is obviously like he could probably play for the Irish rugby team. He's that big, but I'd be going for um, I'd be going for Hickey fullback. Okay, okay, fair enough. Then, uh, and I'll go along with that as well. So, who would you say then is the number four? So here we're picking between the likes of Barry Nash. We're picking JJ Delaney. Sorry, um, Jackie Terr. Jackie Terrell, I should say. Yeah, who are you looking at here? Um, probably looking at Jackie. Being honest, um, I'm probably looking at Jackie. Uh, Barry Nash was obviously in the conversation for hurler the year last year. Um, has been brilliant. Uh, he is mad as well. You look at it. he hadn't played cornerback before the COVID championship in 2020. So, uh, Casey been out. Put Morrissey back full back and put Nash cornerback. Imagine today, like, like what he's gone on to do uh, as a cor- as a cornerback since. Um, oh, Jesus, ja- Jackie was Jackie was so hard beat as a cornerback, though, wasn't he? Um, he was, yeah. No, I, I'm happy enough to put him in there. I think he deserves his spot there. Yeah, thirty six and counting. Surprise, surprise. Hey, let let the get, let the games begin now. Five, six, and seven. So like, oh. like this when you go down through. The personnel that we have to choose from here. Right. Like so, the- Jeremy Burns, uh, reigning hurler of the year. We've got Tommy Walsh, two thousand nine, n- nine time All Star, <laughs> and two thousand nine hurler of the year. So he was hurler of the year during this particular era and finished up that final against Tipperary, holding the ball and running off, charging around the field. Uh, who else do we have for the wing back spots? We've Kyle Hayes and we've JJ Delaney. So it's a straight, and we're going to pick wing backs at wing back, yeah. and we're going to go centre back with centre back. So that's it's, it's straight up Tommy against Dermot Burns because they both play number five all the time. Can I just ask you here, right? If we're picking this team, on like what way are we picking it? Are we picking it as a team? Like a because I'd be picking it in the sense of I probably have one Kilkenny and one Limerick in the sense of the, the wing backs are completely different. Like yeah. the 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 be great balance. I'm just saying if you had Dermot Burns at five. And we'd say JJ at seven. There's a great balance to that. If you had Tommy at five and you had Kyle Hayes more of forward, there's a great balance to that. But I don't know in a way if you can have the two Kilkenny and the two I think that and the two Limerick, I think there needs to be a balance to it. That's yeah, my and opinion. And yet somehow having the two of them together worked out great for both <laughs> the teams. So that is the greatest load of rot I've ever heard. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to say in the in the modern game. Uh, You're looking pick, for a way out. You're looking to pick one of each, and look, we'll just call it square and leave it at oh, that. Oh, okay. Do I? Do I? I'll pick my. I'll pick mine here. Here now. Tommy Walsh no, no. five. JJ Delaney seven. Right. So you've nailed your click any colours to the mask as always. Is Kyle Hayes not the greatest athlete we've ever seen in hurling? Greatest athlete is JJ Delaney not the greatest defender we've ever seen in hurling? Um. I mean, like, it, it's not like no is the answer to, the, to any of these questions. But, like, to be fair, Kyle Hayes is the best athlete oh, Ireland's ever seen. He's unbelievable, yeah. And he obviously can play, can play, he can probably play, he can go in six, he can go in wing forward, he can go in full forward, he can go in centre forward. And JJ can obviously play in certain other positions. And I'd say he probably could have played in the forwards, or at least full forward as well, if they ever needed him up there. Yeah. Oh, this is tough. All right. I, actually, and just before we answer that one, because we've no idea how we're going to answer it, t- um, with Burns, the amount he scores from freeze and from play. Ah, yeah. Now, and Tommy obviously had the versatility, all stars in three different lines, but Burns, the amount of times he gets big scores on big days, like he stepped up so many times this year and obviously had to play through Monster Championships. We might as well bring that up again. <laughs> right, but just on that as well, see... The the modern thing I'm saying to you is worth is worth bringing up. It's just like Tommy 
you didn't shoot from wing back back then, whether it was to do with conditions, whether it was to do with strength conditioning, whether it was to do with hurls, whether it was to do with the weight of the ball. Whereas Burns now, so no, but how clean is the? Did he not? Or no, was it? He never. It, no, Shane. He never. He never. The Euro Six semi final was the first time he ever scored from play. Yeah, like um, did John Gardner not score from play? He did. Yeah, but it was a it was a rarity. I'm just saying, like if you're picking a modern team. Like Dermot Burns, you have someone who can score from 120 yards from freeze out of his hand. He's someone who can hit 65. You know, and just that's what that's kind of what I'm trying to say to you. Are we picking, you know, are we picking a team for 15 years ago, or are we picking a team for now? Because Burns, if you're picking a team for now, it's very hard to leave Dermot Burns off it. So what is our criteria? We don't have any criteria, of course, is the big problem here, and we're just trying to imagine like. I think we're trying to imagine either Burns back in that era or the likes of Walsh and, and Delaney in this era. And I think all four would do well in the, oh, yeah. in the opposite eras. Oh, it's so hard to pick. This is ridiculously hard to pick. Um, Tommy or... Joe, you know I'll go with Tommy Walsh. I just found him just thrilling to watch. Can I ask as much you? As I, yeah. I didn't want Michael Kenny. I always wanted him to lose. But, like, you know, what a player. Can I ask you a question from a Tipperary supporter's point of view? No, no, no. I'm just no. This is a genuine question. How killing was it to have him against you in big games? I put it to you that way. Yes, but you could also say that about Burns as well because he's you know how many times has he put the dagger in the heart of the opposition? But like I agree with you. Like when Tommy Walsh won a ball and put it to the clouds, it was worth extra. It was the same as like Brian Lowe yeah. putting the ball to the clouds. You know the the supporters went nuts for it as well, and it really did lift the team. So I'd be I'd be okay with going Tommy Walsh here, but at the same time doffing the hat at Dermot Burns, I'd be okay with going to, for Tommy Walsh here. Hey, just like, okay, I I'm 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 happy with that too. Like Dermot Burns is an unbelievable player. The thing is, the caveat you have to take into this as well is that like where will Dermot Burns be in five years? Where will Kyle Hayes be in seven or eight years? We're they, talking they, about those that four year period. Yeah, but yeah, you know, but you know, but you know what I mean. Part of Part of our memory of Tommy is what he did before and what he did after as well, if you get me, and JJ as well. Whereas Limerick, those boys are all still in their prime at the moment. Um, I think we'll stick with the numbers we are at the minute. So we're at we're at number six. Um yeah. it's it's not it's not cut and dry uh, in the sense of I think Declan Hannon is definitely favourite to take the number six. But if you talk to anybody in Kilkenny, they will tell you that Brian Hogan was the glue that held Kilkenny together. On the Suman, um always held his ground there, probably played that sweeper six maybe before a lot of other players did, I'd say, as well. Um, you know, shielded his full back line really well. But, like, if you look at what, what Declan Hannon has done from the number six position, he shields his defence really well. He, he quarterbacks up the field. Like, how many how many scores start with Hannon? How many of the triangle pass movements start with Hannon? How many score, big scores he got in big games? Thinking back to even, I know it's not in our remit, but the 2018 final, when he came and got two points, he definitely got, he got soared forward against Cork and got a point or two in 2021 as well. Can't remember whether he scored last year. Um, but I, I'd be having Hannon. It'd be Hannon at six for me. Yeah, it'd be Hannon as well for me. And I, and I look, I'm with you. I echo everything you said about... Um, Brian Hogan, he's been absolutely brilliant. And even if we want a small little ghetto clause, it's that John Tennyson played in one of those finals instead of him. It was 2006. So if we're looking for a little ghetto clause, make it easier for ourselves, we could do that. But look, that's not to say, to say that Brian Hogan wasn't brilliant. But that's evened it up. Three each so far. Now the big one here. JJ <laughs> or Kyle Hayes. I mean, both brilliant in their own right. And completely different players. Like totally different players. But they obviously some similar traits, both brilliant under the high ball. Um, I think Kyle Hayes' defending is totally underrated. I think he's a yeah. brilliant I think he's a brilliant defender. A lot of people see him just going forward and marauding down the wing. Um, that's not something that JJ ever would have done. There's no point in saying any different. I I don't remember him being in the opposition half ever, um, Ooh. in any game ever, really. Um but to me he's the greatest defender that He's the greatest defender I've ever seen anyway. And I've seen Brian Whelan at fairly a very, very close quarters. He'd be probably a close second in that regard. Um, he's just an unbelievable defender. Um try and penetrate and listen, try and penetrate a half back line of Walsh, Hannon, and Delaney. You could say the same about Hayes, but Delaney would edge it just for me there. 
It is a really tough one, but do you know what? I do think that JJ does just about get the nod here. Like, yeah, he was just unstoppable there for so long. And like Hayes has played each one of these years and JJ missed one year out of that four-year period. So again, we could look for a little bit of wiggle room on that. But I do think for so many people, he's the greatest defender of all time. Brian Cody went out of his way to sort of make very positive you know, comments about him when really... He doesn't do that about anybody, certainly not to that level. So. Shane, it's so funny to see the comments coming in, right? It's like someone from Kilkenny, E2 boys are high if you pick Hayes ahead of Laney. Someone from someone from Limerick has to be Hayes all day, every day. It's just gas. Like, I know they have an appreciation for lads in other counties, but the, the bias that comes in is unbelievable. Yeah, column lines, blind spot. This is Kyle Hayes if you have anything about you, although Hayes won two finals in the half forward line which is, you know, a little get-out clause for us. We're looking for any little get-out clause we can get on some of these, aren't we? <laughs> I, don't, um, I, 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 would still, I would still have had JJ ahead of his um, here, but, like, in time, maybe we'll be talking about, maybe this will be a 2020 to 2024 Limerick five in a row. You don't know, and maybe Hayes will have even more in the bank then. But, um, geez, I'd be fairly happy if I was Nicky Quaid standing in the goals with them six boys in front of me, I can tell you that. Okay, midfield then. We're looking for a little bit more pain for ourselves here. Does Chad Fitzpatrick get in here? Chad Fitzpatrick is definitely heavy in the conversation. That would have been his best hurling, wouldn't it? That that era yeah. would have been his best hurling. Um, did he get young hurler the year in 06? Am I imagining that? He might have got young hurler the year in 06. It might um, have been 06. Uh, Chad and Eric Ling would be the two Kilkenny's there. McFenney wouldn't come into the conversation. He was a sub in 09. And really, only Michael Rice played in, in there 11. as well. Michael Rice played. So the midfielders that they had during that era, Tommy Walsh and Ch was that? Sorry, when one eleven twelve. Okay, so it was Tommy Walsh. Uh, sorry, it was Cha and Derek Ling in 06. It was Ling and Cha in 07. 08 was Cha and Ling, and nine was Ling and Rice. So Ling seems to be the one that is there regularly in the own nine final. <laughs> He was taken off after 51 minutes. Uh, they both played the full match in 08. 07, they both played the full match. And 06, I think they both played the full match, although the, the Wikipedia doesn't make it clear there who come off. I think Chaff Fitzpatrick might be high on the list here. Of the Kilkenny lads, I'd say probably Cha. Yeah, just so it's Cha and Ling. And what we were, it's O'Donovan and it's O'Donovan and O'Donoghue, realistically. Yeah, O'Donovan and O'Donoghue. Yeah. Imagine the contrast with Cha and Willow Dunhu. As in how they'd complement each other. Oh my god. The silk and the brawn. Yeah. Um Darrow Donovan's probably one of the most or, or, or underrated herders in the country at this stage, and maybe underappreciated at times. He's maybe getting the appreciation this year. Um if you had Ling and if you had Ling and O'Donoghue, you'd have two absolute powerhouses, two similar type players. Um, I go, I'd be, I'd be happy with, I'd be happy with Cha and and with O'Donoghue. Think you might be muted there, Shano. Think you might be. Oh, I am indeed. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm happy enough to go with that. I think it's like. Are a, we okay? I, I, I know we're saying that they complement each other beautifully. Is Daryl Donovan getting a raw deal here? Well, I think that like he's playing unbelievable stuff at the moment, and like back in 2018, I was calling for him to be an all star, and I think he's been really, really good throughout the the period since. But I think Will O'Donoghue's probably those couple of years there, even during the COVID seasons, he was particularly dominant. And while O'Donovan was still really good, I think those couple of years there, I think O'Donoghue was the best midfielder in the country. So, yeah, no, I think that's fair enough. I think. We're not doing a disservice to Daryl Donovan here because we think he's class and he could end up hurler of the year this year. But I think on the basis of what we're talking to up until now, without having seen the final yet, we'd have to go with him. OK. Derek Ling has probably not got enough of a spake here and maybe he'll use it as motivation on Sunday. Who, who he knows? Should. But he, he, was some, he, he was some power. And this was his probably, this was his peak time. Did he retire after 2010? I yeah, think I think it was, had, yeah. This was four of his best years, I would say. Yeah. Um, uh, he was and uh, he, he was, was a train coming up the middle. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. He, he like you could throw a blanket over the four of them realistically. 
You could indeed. Okay, uh, Kilkenny played some of the worst teams of all time in those Leinster Championships. Can't compare them to this Limerick team, really. Chalk and cheese, says Colm Lyons, blind spot. Fair point? Yeah, but they still they still went to beat all the Munster teams when they had to beat them in the All Ireland stage. Do you know what I mean? I, I understand what I understand what he's saying. Um, until the provincial system changes, we're probably going to be having this conversation most years. But look at who's in the All Ireland final again: a Leinster yeah. team and a Munster team. And you can say, oh, all the Munster teams have been softened up to this point. Well, Limerick haven't been softened up. So uh, you know what I mean. And Kilkenny are still there. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if uh, I. Do you know what I'm glad about? I'm glad we stuck to we stuck to our metal and the power rankings for I think the whole of the year with Kilkenny either two or three the whole of the year. And yeah, as blind as you are to monster, <laughs> as blind as you are to monster times, you're not that blind. <laughs> hey, I'm as blind as you'd see. Um, <laughs> come here. Is there any like when we're naming the forward line here? Is there any players that will just be like, okay, this person's number fourteen, this person's number eleven? Um, and we just like where are we picking Henry Shefflin? Now I'll just go through, and I know positions mean nothing, blah blah blah. But in the O nine final, sorry, yeah, in O nine final, he played. He wore number eleven. He wore number fourteen in O eight, two thousand seven. Wore fourteen. He was in full forward. He got the got the goal didn't he, against Limerick. Yeah, yeah, and he was centre forward in two thousand and six. So we could play him centre forward. We could play him full forward. I'd be more inclined to probably play him centre forward. Um, Henry was harder the year from centre forward in 06. Keane Lynch was harder the year from centre forward in 2021. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, do you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're, like Henry's a search. Lynch is a search. There's those two are search. And I'd say Aaron Galan is a search. Yeah. And is Eddie a search? I, we, I think we have to go into it a bit more. Like, is Gerald Hegarty a cert? Her year in 20, man of the match, uh, or 2021, was it? 2020, man of the match, all Ireland final performance in 21 and 22. Owen Larkin, Tom Morris. Yeah, see, this is, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, oh. Hen, Hen, I think we, we, we both agree on Henry, Keane Lynch, and Galan all been cert at this point. And then we oh. can, it's just a matter of, where we actually picked them because Henry has greater flexibility um, and has played full forward. Would you pick? Um, would you pick Henry at fourteen, Lynch at eleven, and Galan in the corner, but playing as a two man, playing as a two man full forward line? If you get me, and well, he can look, play I, at the edge of the square. I'm happy to take any get out clauses we can we can find here. <laughs> so right, I put a Lynch in at eleven, Galan in at thirteen, Henry's fourteen. Yeah, we're happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Porter Porter says Richie Hogan has to be in there. Um, and he's just like Rich Richie Hogan uh only started his first championship match and I was marking him in it. It was in two thousand and eight. And he didn't did he even I, I'm not even sure if he came on in the O nine final. And Richie Hogan played very, very little during this time. He played like him and TJ played very little during this time. They're not as good as they were since they're not they're not even in the conversation. Um yeah, ones... Richie Richie Power started in 06, got himself a point. Uh, Richie Hogan didn't appear. He hadn't made his debut at that stage. Richie Hogan in 07, he didn't start and wasn't on the bench either. 08, did Richie Hogan start? I don't see his name. That... No, he's Jenna, an unused sub. On he's an sub. I, 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 I want to track back a second, and Tram Spieler has made me tr uh, kind of just track back a small bit. He says, Hegarty more of a certain Lynch. Heard of the years picked by journalists, quite frankly. It shouldn't hold much currency. P.S. You two are knowledgeable, knowledgeable journalists. Thanks very mm -hmm. much for that. But if you look at the four year spell that we're talking about here, so Lynch's 18 heard of the year is out of the question here, right? So he's brilliant in, he's very good in 20. He was heard of the year in 2021. Mm. He didn't play in 2022. He and played he's minimally at the start. And he's yeah. barely played in 2023. Yeah. So he's played two of the four years. And he was hurler the year in one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, for, I, for, I think when I think when you're they're looking at who you're going to leave out based on what they potentially achieved during that period. Like if you look at what uh, what Owen Larkin achieved during that period, what Eddie achieved during that, do you know what I mean? Lynch, as good as Lynch is, yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, no. that and the comment makes like it's very makes it a hell of a lot of sense. If you look at what Hegarty has done within the four years, if you look at what Tom Morrissey has done within the four years, has it been more impressive than all of them? 
it it has. There's no getting away from it, actually. I think we might have to leave Grode Lynch out of this, good and all as he is. Grode Lynch, the mixture of Grode Eckerty and Keen Lynch. The hybrid. Right. Did <laughs> I say that? Lynch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to. And I think we're going to have to play Grode Hegarty where he plays. So Keen Lynch has dropped out of the team. We think he's the best curler in the country when he's fully fit, but he basically hasn't been for a couple of years. Does Henry go back out to 11? He might have to. But uh, I think Bo I think Owen Larkin has to be on this team. But I also think Tom Morrissey has to be on this team. <sighs> Which makes it stink it up. Somebody, um, somebody's going to lose out here. I'd argue that Grode Hegarty got hurler the year in 2020, but it should have been Tom. Like, it was my vote at the time that it should have been Tom Morrissey. You know that I was saying that at the time. And this year, Hegarty hasn't been overly good so far. He's shown signs. But Morrissey has been as good as ever. Now, he's been taken off after about 55 minutes in a couple of games. Not entirely sure why. Maybe it's to get a bounce from the bench or whatever. But to me, I'd actually... Pro then again, you look at Hegarty in the all Ireland Finals and he's scoring... What did he score in the final last year? 1-4, 1-5? 1-5, 2-2 and 7 points in the last three all Ireland Finals. But has Tom Morrissey been more consistent? Yeah. Like, like I'd probably be... Very, I'd probably be very happy with a half hour line of Tom Morrissey, Henry Shefflin, Owen Larkin. We're leaving off. Yeah, I understand the lads are going to go mad about, about leaving off Keane Lynch, but I think he, he heard two of the four years, if you get me. You yeah. know, he was he was, he was Keane Lynch for two of the four. He hasn't, you know, and he, hopefully he will be again, you know? Yeah, so hurling is hurling. Uh, Lynch is Lynch. But unfortunately, we have to leave him out. Yeah, look, I, I feel I feel a little bit dirty leaving um, Tom Morrissey out of this. But just on the base of what Hegarty's done in the All Ireland Finals, you can't but put him in. Oh, yeah, that's a fifty-fifty call now. Um, it's a fifty-fifty call between between Morrissey and Hegarty. But what maybe what Hegarty has done in in All Ireland Finals is huge. He is a big big game player. There's no point in saying any different. But honest, Tom. Is a man for every day. Did you just and, call him Honest Tom? Yeah, <laughs> like he's as he's as honest as the day is long. You will get, you know what you get from him every day, every every, every day he goes out, he empty the tank. Um, so he's probably a little bit hard done by. He's he's been wronged in a big way. So then we've got two spots left in the full forward line. We've got Aaron Gillan picked in there at number thirteen. So who's number 14? Who's number 15? By the way, Column Line's blind spot says Morrissey plays 12. He goes in ahead of Larkin. Larkin was hurler the year in 08. He was unbelievable. And he started all of these big games. Uh, he didn't score in all of them. I'm, well, I'm not entirely sure if he scored in all of them. He scored oh, he scored 1-4 against Watford in 08. He was hurler the year that, that day. He scored four points against Limerick in 2007. 06, did he score? He didn't score. 2009. Um, what did he score that day? He scored three points. I don't know. I think it's impossible to leave out Larkin. Like, we haven't even got into much detail about Larkin, either one of us, because it's almost like a given. It's kind of like you don't need to, almost. You yeah. know what I mean? That was probably his, well, he had a fair few golden spells, but he was hurt the year within that within that time as well. Um, yeah, I, I just, I wouldn't be comfortable picking a team without him, being honest. Would you be, like, where does Richie Power come in here? So a, a point against Tip in the 09 final. I, I don't know if he was quite that dominant in that game. Um, the year before, he scored two points against Watford in that hammering. The year before that, he scored four against Limerick. Did he take over the freeze when Shefflin went off injured? I think in he might seven. Have. In seven, yeah. Definitely took over in 10. I can't remember in seven. He probably did. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Wikipedia doesn't make that obvious. And then in the final in... 06, he scored a point. So the scoring wouldn't, you know, on the face of it, suggest it. But like, I, I know we all know that it's about more than just that. Um, the other options, Eddie Martin Brennan. Comerford. Martin Comerford. But is he more of a half forward? He got one three, didn't he, in the 06 final from the edge of the square. He's, I think he's forever. He, now, he scored one point. Is. He scored one point that day. Aidan Fogarty scored one three. Sorry. Uh, was it the. Which game was it where he bounced the ball into the ground? Tip 09? No, no it, was against, it was against Cork. It won the All Ireland Finals. Maybe it was 03, was it? It, was, it could have been yeah, 03. Um, Taggy definitely deserves to be in the conversation as well. 
Martin Comerford in 09, I know he came on and got the goal, but he wasn't a guaranteed guaranteed starter in 09. Um, yeah. oh. you'd, you'd be doing well to leave Eddie Brennan off this. He scored 2 4 in the 08 final. He scored 1 5 in the 07 final. Baron, the most ridiculous thing in the history of the GA, Brian Cody get man the match in the 08 final. He would have been man the match in back to back All Ireland finals, which hasn't been done since or hasn't been done again until our man Hegarty did it um in the last two years. Um at- yeah he scored he scored three points in the 09 final as well and I think Martin Maher has spoken a few times about how difficult he found him that day. Yeah um Martin Maher sorry Brendan Martin's Brendan, his brother yeah yeah um like fast Eddie was still in his pomp at that stage so then one spot left over who are you looking at? We're trying a tip now. We're trying Callan. <laughs> it's like it was perfectly left for him. The the best, yeah. the biggest, highest goal scorer in championship history. Uh, like who's in the conversation here? You're looking at your your Seamus Flanagan's. You're looking. By the way, Peter Casey hasn't has barely been mentioned here. He hasn't been mentioned. Now, to be fair, we scored five in the five from play in within what twenty five minutes in the twenty one final. Didn't really play last year. He's been a bit on and off this year um, at different stages. Graham Mulcahy obviously is kind of back in the fold again, having maybe not played at all or played very little last year. Flanagan again is kind of another one of the, not unheralded, but he just delivers most days. Um, Richie Power do enough within this time. But who, who who's he up against? up against Seamus Flanagan I would say or, and maybe mm, Martin Comfort probably was just edging out at this stage yeah uh, and then so Taggy did very well in that 06 final um, let's see I think we're, we're picking a full forward here either that or we're putting Galan full forward and we're picking a corner forward well Galan was a full forward really or is yeah. a full forward really but you know what I mean but just we're not picking three corner forwards i put it to you that way yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So we'll go Galan. So we are picking a 13 then. So we're going to yeah. put Galan in the unusual number 14 jersey. Yeah. But even though he's parked in the edge of the square most of the time. Yeah, um, yeah. It's funny, like, the comments that come in, like, 36 and counting. Pure hurlers be Jim hurlers. <laughs> right, um, almighty. Who are you thinking here for 14? Like, this is, the uh, thing about this is... Well, 13, 13, 13. 13. But you, you, could, you could play uh, Flanagan as a 13 as well, if you like. Yeah, we haven't juggled around a team where we're putting Henry in 13 or something and we're putting Keane Lynch in and we're... Do you know what I mean? I think we we've been... We could if we wanted to. We've been, we've been fairly honest with that and tried to stay true to, you know, there's strict criteria here and we've tried to, you know, stick to them where possible. Uh, like strict criteria in that we're making it up <laughs> as we go along? Something like that. Um, Joe, let's see how many of each we have so far. So, in terms of this, shouldn't know, matter one, now. Three, this shouldn't three, matter. Four, this five, shouldn't matter. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. We've already got eight Kilkenny and seven Limerick. Yeah, but that does that doesn't that doesn't mean that if a Kilkenny man is more deserving that it should be nine six Kilkenny. Like we're not leveling up the books here. We like to cook the books when we can, though. <laughs> um, how has Flanagan done in the finals overall? He was um, very good against Cork. That was 2021. Uh, let's see, 2022 against Limerick, scored two points. Uh, 2020 All Ireland hurling final. Let me oh, for sure. I have it here in front of me. Actually, he scored three from play, which is, which is no mean feat as well. In, yeah. Like, and then, yeah. So if we're going for now, if we're going for an out and out corner forward here, not necessarily out and out. Does Taggy come into the mix here big time? Um, Taggy's very good across this period now against Tipperary. Obviously, the brother was on him, and and Taggy was taken off that day. So, but you know, he, ha- he has been brilliant. <laughs> like, he scored one three, um, the first year against Cork, brilliant that day, a point against Limerick. Then he scored three against Waterford when they scored 330. And did he score an 09? No, I think he might have got one point that day. Mm, no. Scoreless against Tipperary that day. So, in general, yeah, very good across the board. But Flanagan has, like, Flanagan's had a very good year as well, hasn't he? Like, he scored a couple of goals early on when Limerick were 
not exactly I think on he's fire. Four goals Actually, even go back to Flanagan last year. Flanagan last year, eight points against yeah. Limerick or against Clare. He was in the hurler of the year conversation there for a while. Yeah. Um, I don't see to me, it's probably it's between probably Richie Power and Flanagan. And, a, and what, but like to me, Richie's best years may have just come just after this. Um, maybe 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, and then he obviously got some injuries or whatever. Um, it's Richie Power or Flanagan, and it's a, t- it's a time cost to be honest with you. Okay, it's funny, uh, it's I'm funny gonna... though, like, like. They're different. They are di- completely different types of players. Um, do Flanagan is you know because Galan is in there. Flanagan Galan that kind of two man act inside. Does that does that weigh more in his? I'm probably I probably stump at Richie Power. Been honest with you. Do you are we? You know when we talk about Jade Laney and uh, Tommy Walsh, is there a little bit of sort of you know we're taking their career as a whole rather than that four year period because Burns has probably another three or four years in him. Hayes could have another eight years in him. Like, are we looking a little bit at the careers as a whole of Tommy and JJ and giving them the edge on that basis? Uh, I, I wouldn't have thought so. I wouldn't have thought so because Tommy was hurt the year within that within that time. Um, JJ obviously missed the sixth final, but he played all the games up until that. Um, I remember him, I, I remember I him doing big damage on Dan at one stage in one of them games as well. Um, I, I don't... I, I'm not... I, what what what's picked? What's picked is picked. Well, look, I think history would show that we uh, picked Henry Shefflin at fourteen and then moved him out to eleven when it suited us. We moved Galan in as well. Uh, did you see that? Uh, strict criteria says catnap. Shane mentions a Limerick player. Vernie argues for a Kilkenny player instead. <laughs> Thirty six and counting says about Flanagan. Cody wouldn't have even called him in for a trial. Oh six oh nine. But doesn't that tell you everything you need to know about what Kylie and Kinnerkin so and these players themselves are doing? That a player like that who, you know, maybe not the silkiest touch in the world when you first saw him come on the scene, but now the guy is running 45 yards and we're going away from goal. A player has got his hurley completely outstretched and he's firing it over the bar, over their stick. And he's you know, encouraged to do it. Yeah, and like people will obviously laugh at the comparison, but like the way Clifford managed to extend his body and his foot out to the side to take a shot, even when someone's looking to block him down, like... In a, in a small little way, Flanagan is doing that with his shooting over his shoulder. Like, he's a big man in the first place and he's getting full extension. Yeah. Uh, no, listen, he's, and he's been unbelievably effective at different stages. He's, he's, he's popped up in games when they've really, really needed him. Like last year's Munster final and he's popped up earlier this year. Flanagan, I'd say, with O'Donoghue, O'Donovan, uh, and probably Dad Morrissey, stood up in games this year when Limerick's championship was kind of hanging by a thread. I still have Richie Power in though. Okay, so we've got the final team here anyway, which includes Flanagan instead of him, uh, which I'm sure you're buzzing about. But I just don't think we could have a nine v six split here. I don't think. I don't think that's. I don't think that's relevant. I think it's. Well, whoever... Do you know what is relevant though? Like Dermot Burns is a terminator at wing back. Like the amount of scores he gets, the amount of catches he gets, all that kind of stuff. It it almost feels sacrilege to leave him out. And I do think that in some ways we all just like Tommy Walsh, swashbuckling player. It almost feels like leaving out Ryder over out of a soccer team, you know, that, that kind of a thing. If we were picking the All Stars, what we do is this. Um, if we were on the All Star Committee, and sorry to the lads that are on the All Star Committee, but Dermot Burns would be pick number two, Kyle Hayes would be pick number four, Tommy would be five, Hannon would be six. Days would be seven and probably Noel Hickey full back and we get we'd get them all in. Five for one line and we'd leave out the two cornerbacks. That's probably what would happen. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be like Dublin footballers at the weekend. They picked five corner forwards or five inside <laughs> forwards in yeah, the, in the yeah, corner. Yeah. So look, I look, I'm gonna I'm gonna strong arm for once. You always strong arm me, I'm gonna strong arm for once. And we're gonna go with the team like this. Are you are you okay to sign off on it? Uh well, sure, like we've done a bit of horse trading. Um I probably got the better of it back the field and you've probably got the better of it up the top end of the pitch. The column line's blind spot with a good one here. Burns more important to his team than Tommy. Pull more games out of the fire. That's a actually, fair point. Actually, it's unbelievably important to his team, yeah. Uh, but but like what you said, what you said about Tommy earlier, Tommy catching a ball, Tommy delivering a ball. Like what was that worth to his team? What was that worth to what was that worth to the crowd even? Like, do you know what I mean? It lifted it, it was like a rising tide lifting all boats, like. Yeah, Catnap is he's backing me, huh, Shane? Stick to your guns. I mean, 
obviously I don't want to be talking about either of these teams in positive terms, <laughs> but I feel I've been shanghai here in a big way. Anyway, we'll go through the team. Nicky Quaid and Sean Finn. Noel Hickey, Jackie Terrell and Tommy Walsh. Number six, Declan Hannon. Seven and eight are uh, JJ Laney, James Shaw, Fitzpatrick. Two more Limerick men in Willow Donoghue and Grode Hegarty, who takes up the first of the half forward slots. Henry Shefflin and Owen Larkin fill that out. And a full forward line of Eddie Brennan, Aaron Galan, and Seamus Flanagan. Jesus Christ almighty. You imagine throwing that team into Leinster, the damage they do. We'll have to pick a team to try. Do you know what we, we, we could do the next day is pick an alternative 15 and see what it would be like. The two wing backs would be Burns and, Burns and Hayes, anyway. Brian Hogan centre back. It wouldn't be a bad little team, would it? Jesus Christ, we nearly should have done that at the start. Huh? The yeah. A versus B training games down in Nolan Park, obviously. Yeah. Well, sure. Can Kenny have the two best teams in the country? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, and let John Keenan rep. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, so keep the comments coming in, even if you're watching the show after the um, after it's been live or whatever. Get your comments in. Name your teams. Tell us why we're wrong. Just don't tell us, oh, you're wrong or you hate Yeah, no, don't send that. Tell us why. why you're wrong. How did you not have him in? Give us the reason why X should be in and why, why he shouldn't be in. Um, Connor Heaney says, if you said Tommy, lads, know who you're on about. Imagine saying Dermot, lads wouldn't have a clue, say no more. Well, like there was a period there in Kilkenny where surnames were superfluous. Yeah. You know, you well, were just you, talking if, about your Tommy's. You said, if you said Burns, though, everyone knows who you're talking about. Burnsy. Yeah. Um, Burnsy. 